and welcome back to Mini Urban Farm, a channel about gardening and homesteading in the suburbs. Um, I have not been out in this garden for the past couple of days because it has been cold as you know what, and I've definitely noticed that the frost has um, done some damage out here to some of the things that do not take the frost very well, um, clearly. So I am going to take you along with me and look at what did not survive the frost, what did survive the frost, whether we have to rip things out or plant new things, and what we're gonna do about it. All right, so just at first glance, I can see these Roma tomatoes here and there not doing so well. Um, a lot of this stuff looks like it's fine, right? The arugula, the salad greens. I do have tomatoes over there behind that tree that I think they look okay, but I haven't really gotten too close to them yet. Again, salad greens looking fine. And then I can definitely see some of the beans in here. Um, so we'll start on this side. And some of these beans, yeah, definitely, definitely dead. I mean, this is like crispy in here so this is gonna have to come out um, I have not been getting too many beans lately anyway um, which is why I didn't really feel the need to cover a lot of this stuff right if I was getting a huge harvest then I obviously would have come out and like protected the crops um, we do have a little bit of green growth but mostly this stuff is like you can tell nice and crispy so um, I don't see any like flowers or anything of course because it's been cold so this stuff is definitely going to come out. This is an entire row of green beans here. These were, um, or are, Blue Lake bush beans, I believe. So all of these are going to come out. I think I might compost them in place. Um, but at the end, then I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm ripping out and all that. These tomatoes, surprisingly, don't have too much damage on them. These are, I think, pink bumblebee tomatoes. The tops of them, yeah, this is definitely here. You can see, like, all brown. Um, this got a lot of damage this over here got some damage um, but I mean for the most part they're actually still alive my little tomato clusters in here are still kicking um, I have not gotten any ripe tomatoes off of these yet because I planted them really late and I think also the way that I fertilize them you can see another cluster in here the way that I fertilize them I don't think they got what they needed um, I did switch fertilizers this past season to something that I have not used before because I couldn't find the fertilizer that I was using um, and I, I fertilized everything with that same fertilizer and I think it had a lot of nitrogen um, I think it's when you have like when you have a lot of this greenery right a lot of the foliage but not a lot of actual fruit and you you know it's probably because you got a lot of nitrogen and not anything else that they needed you do have some flowers in here um, but to be honest with you guys I think I might just be ripping some of these things out too because I mean they did get some damage and I want to be able to start fresh um, yeah a lot of this has it's like wilted you can see these are definitely signs of frost so the plant isn't dead itself um, the parsley underneath it all of my parsley here is doing just fine um, parsley is completely fine in the cold um, this is the same thing you have a lot of brown this like browning kind of I don't know what to call it and it looks kind of like brown and white and wilty that's definitely frost damage the same thing with this over here it's like almost black if you can see that I mean this is just gonna come out like this doesn't have any fruit on it either so that's a little one there um, there's I think I want to say there's two in there and then this one which never really took off anyway I'll be ripping that out um so I, oh and i i found two little green beans on this one plant that actually survived um it does still have another oh no that's a different plant the one that's dead over here is different but this one right next to it isn't that funny it has flowers on it um the salad greens doing just fine i mean these don't seem like they were impacted at all and actually i have been harvesting a ton from the kale so you can see like i've been making snips all over the place um we have been using this a ton so i think i'm going to be planting more of this and probably less of the swiss chard this season and then oh my gosh my roma tomatoes they look so ridiculously sad oh my gosh this is i mean clear frost damage so yeah i think it's time that this goes um and i did have some oh okay well oh no and you can see they've actually you have some baby tomatoes here that fell also because of the frost they didn't make it so i'm gonna get my bowl and i'm gonna just take off that entire cluster 
of tomatoes. Um, so at least we have something and then these will ripen on the countertop, which is fine. Um, and then next to it, this one is taking off a little bit. It's gotten a lot more growth recently and seems to not actually have been damaged at all by the frost. But if we're taking out one, I'll probably just use the space for something else. The same thing here with these. I mean, these Roma tomatoes, they did not like that at all. Like all of this is completely just damaged and dead. Um, this seems to have a little bit, but not too bad. And the other plant over here. And we also have some Roma tomatoes back in here, another cluster that looks like they're ready. Um, oh, and they are literally just falling off the vine at this point. So I'll just put them there for the meantime. My radishes over here were not really affected by the cold because radishes do like cold weather. However, um, because it's been cold and hot and cold and hot, they haven't really formed a lot of bulbs. I've only gotten a few off of this. And so they form like these little leggy type things. This is where the radish would have been. Um, the same thing over here. They're like huge stalks. You get a lot of greenery, um, but not too many bulbs. That should be a bulb instead of like this radishy string thing that you have going on here. So I'll be ripping up those. And then, I mean, the arugula seems fine, but I am going to eventually cut it back. I don't know if I'm going to do that today or not. But yeah, the arugula was not affected. The same thing with the parsley. Parsley is... Even though I've been cutting it tons and tons, we have an entire sea of parsley here. Um, carrots, perfectly fine because they need the cold also, the root vegetable. And the parsley has definitely taken over. This is like all carrots. Um, and you can see because the parsley is like taking over, these carrots are, they're starting to get really leggy um, because the parsley is like just in their space. So the parsley is supposed to be like over here to give the carrots a little bit more sun. Um, I might have to like cut this row here back of the parsley because it's like all up in that space where it's not supposed to be. And then the chamomile. <laughs> um, this is definitely not doing well. This is gonna come up either way. Um, my lemon basil over here clearly does not like the cold. Basil does not love cold weather to begin with. And it's been dying um, for the past couple weeks anyway, just because I think it's behind this tree and it's not getting a lot of sun So this is definitely coming up and then all of this On my other tomatoes back here in the frost um, There were some clumps of tomatoes in here um, Here we go, but like I said, they have not been really fertilized ooh, properly um, or what they really needed so I think this all might just be coming out and then a lesson learned on my part. I did go ahead and order the type of fertilizer I needed, but um, yeah, they have gotten quite a bit of damage as well up here. So these will all be coming out too. And then lastly, my mustard greens are doing just fine. Um, you see that they do have some of like this pest damage over here. Um, I haven't found any caterpillars on them so far or any cutworms or anything like that. So I'm not exactly sure what's causing this, but as far as cold damage, I mean, they're not really getting cold damage because they're doing just fine with the cold. And then I have some parsley scattered back in here as well, which is of course doing just fine. All right. So first of all, I have a bowl. I'm just going to go ahead and harvest all my tomatoes and they are literally just falling off. I just had like a whole bunch of these tiny little baby ones that just dropped when I even touched the plant. Um, so I'll get rid of those and then these ones will just sit on my countertop until they are red oh, and they keep falling. So these I usually use for paste. Um, these are just Roma tomatoes. They're great for paste, um, like spaghetti sauce and that kind of thing. I usually preserve them. There's definitely not enough of them here <laughs> to do anything with. So I'll probably just do like a tomato salad with them. Um, and then I am gonna come in here and rip up. I mean, these radishes have been here for a long time and we still don't have radishes. Um, so I'm just gonna dust off like the dirt and then these will probably just go in compost. Um, oh, we do have like one little radish bulb <laughs> trying to form. Um, at least it was, you know, 
trying to do something, but didn't quite make it. And so these ones, actually the ones that like form something, and even some of the greens, um, they might go to the chickens or to the worms. And oh no, we, I got excited. We had a radish here, right? A nice big bowl, but it split. So that one we can still use. I'll add it to my pile and then just get the rest of these out of here. All right, so all of my Roma tomatoes are gone. Um, I have actually gotten some of these radishes. I did get like one or two that look pretty good. Um, clearly not enough to do anything with them. Um, we'll chop them up and just put them in some salad or something. Um, maybe when that tomato <laughs> bowl ripens. Um, this is everything that is going to the chickens. Um, I did get an arugula plant ripped up in the process because the tomatoes were like right next to it. And then all of the rest of the radishes for the chickens. And then that is my compost pile of dead tomato plants. Um, they can't eat, or the chickens can't eat that. So we will not be giving those to chickens. And so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over there to my beans because the number of beans I'm going to get at this point in time is probably not worth it. Um, I will plant out something else, more than likely some more radishes since it's cool. And now I think I might actually be getting rid of the rest of my tomatoes too. Oh my gosh. where I ripped up my Roma tomatoes and now where I'm ripping this up I am going to be planting out um, breakfast radishes so the French breakfast radishes um, from Baker Creek I still have two packs that I have not used this season and have not been able to use because it has been so hot it is now like in the 40s still at night and even dipping down into the 30s at times so since radishes grow so quickly um, they should be ready in less than a month maybe like three weeks um, and so that'll be the perfect time frame to plant the out before the weather gets extraordinarily hot. So with my cherry tomatoes I've decided that I am going to prune back anything that was dead. The plant itself looks like it's still alive and has a lot of green growth on it so I want to give them a fighting chance if by the beginning of spring when I'm planting out all of my other transplants and tomatoes and all of that if they're still not doing well then I will go ahead and rip up the entire plants. All right so here is the finished result. You can see a whole bunch of stuff came out that is like all the tomatoes I mean this is a drastic haircut for these tomato plants I did remove I think two that were there that were just not gonna make it regardless and so yeah you can see I pruned it quite heavily thankfully tomatoes um, indeterminate tomatoes at least do okay with heavy pruning and then I took some compost and I just laid it on top and kind of like pressed them down into the soil as much as possible I didn't want to completely disturb the soil so I didn't like dig it up and then put the green beans down I just put the green beans um, on top and added some compost to the top this is my like homemade compost that I just got out of the compost bin here um, it is a little bit unfinished you can see some like random stuff in it but that's quite all right and that'll just compost in place this will start turning brown and then it won't look like such a hot mess <laughs> after a bit um, the parsley is going to stay there for now and then over here i went ahead and planted out some radishes french breakfast radishes so hopefully in about two or three weeks or actually maybe closer to three weeks we'll have some radishes so hopefully in the next garden tour we'll have um, little things popping their head out of the soil and then the same thing over here um, I'm gonna go and smooth it out afterward but yeah there's some little radishes there and I don't mind that there's like little pieces of material that's all organic matter and then very dramatic <laughs> transformation over here are my tomatoes so these are more cherry tomatoes I did go ahead and like cut the tops off of a lot of these um, there you go I went ahead and cut the tops of a lot of these mainly because they were dead but also because like some of them are above the fence and they're really not supposed to be showing above the fence and then hopefully this will let a lot of light in which will also be good for the fruit that will start to develop on those vines as well hopefully 
Now, if this is the first time you've dealt with frost or the first time you've done like a massive garden cleanup, it can definitely feel like, what did I just do? I ripped up more than half of my garden. And that's all right because plants are meant to die and be pruned and all of that stuff. Most of the plants that I've pruned are pretty resilient. I expect them to come back when the weather warms up. That is just the natural life cycle. And for the things that I ripped up, um, a lot of them stayed in the soil as organic matter to continue giving back to the soil to give life to next season's garden. So that has been <laughs> my little um, soapbox for right now. Um, I am a little sad that I got rid of a lot of things that I wanted to keep growing but in the long run, it'll be much better for the garden. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.